The single line input method is a column tool that allows you to create borders very easily and create linear elements that have the same width all the way throughout the form. Let's take a look at how to use that tool. To better demonstrate, I'm going to open up a file. I'm going to open the file that's located on local disk C. In my designs file that was, or pardon me, folder that was loaded with my software. In the graphics folder, change my file subtype to graphics. And I'm going to load columns.bmp. I'm going to scale that down just a bit. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in just a touch. All right, so the single line tools are located just below your walk normal input method, and they're digitized in a very similar manner. You have, if I click and hold for the flyout for half a second, you have basically three tools, um, single line center, single line left, and single line right. How the single line tool works is by digitizing a reference point and then setting satin stitches, well, typically satin stitches, setting your multi-stitch line element just off of that line. The center, single line center, will reference the center of that line. So I digitize a reference line, and then I hit enter. And as I see on the bottom of my screen, it's asking for a uh, width point, or I can hit enter to accept the default width, which is um, 20 points. What this allows you to do is click on one side of how, how wide you want it to be, click on the other, and it will be the same width all the way throughout the form. Let me delete that. And we will come in here and look at this shape. So this shape is the same width all the way throughout the form. If I grab my single line center to digitize this shape, I would be guessing at where to put my line because my reference line would be right in the center of where those stitches are. If I want my line to be one of the edges, I can choose single line left or single line right. It doesn't really matter which one of these I choose. And if I grab the wrong one, I can change it later in properties anyway. But um, it will matter, Are you do you tend to digitize clockwise or counterclockwise, and which side of the element do you usually start on? So a single line left, because the element is coming off of the left side, if I started on the interior, I could digitize around the shape in a clockwise fashion, and it would fill in the stitches opposite of that. So when I hit enter, it's going to ask for the width. I can then say I want it to be this wide. From here to here, click, and it's the same width all the way around. Now, because I was very careful where I put that last input point, it joined up and made a nice, um, clean corner. What you may notice, let me delete that, and let me grab this tool again. This time I will go the opposite direction from the outside. I'm holding Alt, I'm going all the way around, keeping those right angles because I'm holding that Alt key. I'm going to come down. I'm not going to be as careful this time. I'm just going to click here. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to in enter my width. Click. Click. And now you can see that it is overlapping and not looking quite like you might expect. So a couple of things you can do. One, you could click on this input point and edit it to overlap. And as soon as they get close enough, they will merge together and create this nice corner for you. Or, let me delete this, we can use a keyboard shortcut. As I'm digitizing around the shape, the single line column is an open shape tool. If I were to hit enter, it would just end the shape. However, if I want it to come back up and seal itself back up so that I don't have to worry about making those points line up exactly, I can hold shift when I hit enter and it will seal itself, and then it's asking for the width here to here. And now it's sealed itself, made a perfect corner 
all the way around. Let me come up here. I will grab the single line center and I will demonstrate what I just did. Again, let me make this a little bit smaller by default. There we go. So if I digitize a shape, the single line is an open shape tool. When I hit enter, it will end that shape and then I can input my width or hit enter again to accept that default width of 20, which is what I'm gonna do this time. And it just finishes right there. However, if I digitize a shape and I want it to meet back up with itself, if I hold shift and hit enter, it will meet back up with itself it's now asking for that width, or I can hit enter to accept the default width again. I hit enter, it accepts that default width, and I have a closed shape. So that's a nice way to kind of meet back up with yourself. It works with um, a walk normal or a single line input. It's nice for those um, open shapes. For lettering forms like this, the single line may not be what you're looking to use it for, but if you wanted to create a border for a shape like this. So I might digitize a shape like this with my normal um, column one or column two tool, but if I wanted to create a border, I might use a single line for that, in which case I could digitize all the way around the form. And I am using a single line center for this because I do want my stitches to overlap. If they line up on screen, they probably aren't going to line up when they sew out because they are going to pull a little bit. So if I give them overlap, it'll at least look good in the sew out. I'll shift to hit enter to close that shape, hit enter to accept the default width. And now I have a border all the way around my E. If I had had my <clears throat> stitching, um, well, let's just go ahead and digitize that right now. Let's grab red. So if I wanted my lettering, under here, I could grab my walk. I could tack everything down. I just realized I'm digitizing in blue because I wasn't paying attention. Let's make that red so it's a little easier to see. And I will grab column tool. This is a column two that I'm using. You could use a column one for that completely up to you. This is just standard digitizing. I'm using a walk to create my travel. Just like we did in the column one and column two videos, we are digitizing this E. However, there we go. Let's give it a little bit more. All right, now if I go into 3D, you can see that that border actually takes up quite a bit of that space. If I want to change how wide that border is, I can change the width of that single line element by clicking in this box and scrolling down on my mouse. Now I wanna be careful, I don't wanna to go too much below 15 or maybe even 20 because if you go too much far, um, farther below, well, farther below 12, you're gonna be almost smaller than your needle, and you're not gonna give yourself a lot of wiggle room. The larger your border, the better off you are gonna be for lining up. However, my E's looking a little bit hard to see. In cases like this, you may find it better to actually sew the border first and the letter second. I just resequenced so we could get a kind of a preview of what that would look like. And now you can see, let me hide my artwork and zoom out just a bit. You can see what that might look like. Properties for single line. I can right click and go to properties. If I go into the single line properties, I can change. Do I want it to be center or left or right? Or I can have it be custom, in which case I can have it fall anywhere I want along that line. So do I want mostly to the outside with a little bit to the inside? Do I want it mostly to the inside with a little bit to the outside? Or do I want it straight on to the center line? I've got all of those options so I can be very flexible about how I have my overlap. We can also change how it handles corners. So sometimes you will need to 
change how, uh, well, let's get a good example up here before we go changing corners. So for more extreme angles, let's take this out of 3D. You can see just how concentrated the stitches are starting to become right there in the middle. It's navigating all the way around and coming back down. And that can be a little bit um, tight. So what we can do is we can go into properties and we can ask to change how it handles the corners. I can ask it to cap the corner. which will have the stitches going pretty much the same direction all the way throughout. Gives it a nice rounded effect. I could have it cap, uh, miter, we just did cap, and have it miter, in which case it does that kind of picture frame angle, which is nice. Um, or a miter style too is typically um, done as a tack down for applique and is meant to mimic the sewing of a traditional sewing machine. Corners are a level dependent feature, so it may depend on the level of software, um, your level of design shop, if you have that or not. So those are the main features and main purposes for your single line column. They are a great tool, again, for borders or for linear elements that are the same width all the way throughout.